between water and land is never ending. Waves shatter themselves in spent fury against the rocky bulwarks of the coast. Willy wall winds pour down the side of a volcano like snow sliding off a roof, building to a hundred mile velocity in a matter of minutes. Here is the very breeding ground of storms. I noticed a string of strange bare mountains rising out of the sea. I asked a fellow passenger what they were. Illusions, I thought he said. I now realise he said illusions. You know, surfing's one of those pastimes that can take you all over the world. Sometimes to strange places. I have a trip coming up that's really different to what I've done before, to the Aleutian Islands. I asked 10 of my mates if they knew about them and they all said, where the hell is that? I actually didn't know either. We just got word that a plane crashed on the runway we're supposed to fly into. It sounds pretty sketchy. But it's a bit of a thrill to think we're going to this totally foreign place. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to rely on my mates and a hell of a lot of common sense. I've tended to frequent warm water places in the past. I guess you could say I like the no-frills approach of a pair of board shorts and a tube of zinc. From everything I've heard and read, that's not going to cut it in the illusions. Needless to say, it'll be a whole lot less comfortable than what I'm used to. We're chasing down the legend of a lone surfer who found a remote bay in the islands decades ago. He camped in isolation for months, drinking from a small stream and living on the bare minimum. Some real guru shit. In all seriousness though, there's a chance we could get into real trouble. Alaska's no joke, and there's a part of me that just hopes we make it home in one piece. If you picked a place on the map that's exactly the opposite of what I'm used to, I've got a feeling that place would be Alaska. Vast expanses of mountains and wilderness, hardly any roads, bush pilots calling the shots. Americans don't call it the last frontier for nothing. The island where the surfer found the bay is extremely remote. So we have a series of stops down the island chain to get there, and each have their own challenges. When I got there, I met Parker Coffin and Nate Zeller at a small airplane hangar, trying to fit all of our shit into a very small plane. And we already have our first problem. I'm not flying today due to wind. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's going to come up Lots pretty. Of wind. It's going to be coming up pretty good in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. In the Aleutians, it's very common for uh, to see delayed flights. Yeah. The yeah. Weather's a big Initially. factor. If you don't like the weather, wait six hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our plane's packed, but who knows when we'll leave. Could be tomorrow, could be a week. We all just had the same realisation. This trip really isn't up to us. We might not even make it. Alaska forces you to come up with a backup plan. And then you need a backup plan for that, and a backup plan for that, and a backup plan for that. And when all else fails, have a bloody drink and go back to the drawing board. 
If you travel with this in mind, the strangest opportunities can present themselves. Very cold, fingers crossed. We've just had a call from a bloke who lives hundreds of miles from the nearest beach, but only a stone's throw from his local waterway. He said he could get us on a wave that he surfs every day, one not reliant on swell. Usually the full moon and then the three days after the full moon are the biggest tides. And you have to be at the right spot at the right time. And put yourself in alignment. Weather came in hot in uh, Dutch Harbor and shut down our plans of getting a small plane over there today. So we're improvising and luckily the tidal board is working. So here we are. There's a point on every adventure where the magnitude of the thing hits you. We're flying 1,200 miles to Unalaska Island, our first stop in the Aleutians. It kind of feels like we're about to make a story that we'll tell our grandkids. Dutch Harbour is America's number one fishing port, a tough town where hard work is the currency and salty pubs are the day ender. It's the launching pad for Aleutian exploration, where ships disappear into the fog, uncertain of safe passage or return. When we asked around for a boat captain, everyone pointed us to Jimmer. He spent his entire life in these treacherous waters. They're his backyard. The Red Sky at night, Fisherman's Delight. Red Sky in the morning, Fisherman's Warning. Locals in town told us, we know there's a big break out there, but we're not surfers. They all looked at us like, what the fuck are you doing out there? We're straight into it, first morning.
excitement in your guys' voices, and you really, really love what you're doing. And yeah, you're partly crazy. <laughs> Jump off a perfectly good boat in the Bering Sea to go surf a wave. We've just encountered our first Aleutian storm, and it blew in with no warning, exactly as they said it would. No one can say when it will leave. And once again, we find ourselves stuck. We've got to hunker down. I think nature's our friend out here, and, and we treat her with respect and sometimes caution. shape a person that they learn how to live with the environment and use it but you have to respect mother nature here that's for sure fly to an island that's much further out. The island that's haunted my mind since first hearing about it. There lives the fabled bay. There's no medical help out there, no paved roads, and nothing that even resembles where I'm from. The weather is rumoured to be even tougher than where we are. And once we go, we could be stuck for weeks. Go for gold, I like to say. But my nerves are really questioning those words right now. The Aleutian volcanic chain stretches all the way from Alaska's mainland to Russia, basically creating a 1,200 mile wall between the Bering Sea and the North Pacific. My mind is struggling to accept that it's real. The scene below feels more like fiction. Pretty crazy to think what you might find out here if you had a lifetime to explore. At the end of a dirt runway which lies next to an active volcano, there's a small community of native Unangans. Visitors here are nearly always hunters. There's only been a few surf parties here before us. The locals remembered the surfer who showed up here decades ago. They said he had enough supplies to last a few months and asked to be dropped off at a bay. They pointed us towards a mud track south of town.
The island feels inhospitable, yet for some reason it's immediately drawn me in. The island seems bare, but is actually rich with life. I tried to imagine what it must have been like to show up here many years ago, hunting for surf alone. No weather reports, no support, no communication to the outside world. Just a desire to get far, far away, where the sound of the land overpowers the sound of everything else. Come over and check it out. I was just going straight, and all of a sudden the wheel was sideways. It like literally snapped off. That's supposed to go into this bowl here. We're quickly finding out that nothing in this place comes easy. Living out here in such a remote region, you kind of have to be a jack of all trades. It's just another day for these guys. Oh, some ball joints on the tire gave way. Oh After Parker's quad yeah. got fixed up, we thought we were in the clear, but we've just heard about a massive storm approaching the island. It's kind of hard to say what things will look like from here on out. Our luck might be behind us.
any good graces the island had bestowed upon us blew away with the 60 knot winds. This is a place full of contradictions. There's a sense of freedom but also confinement on this tiny island in turbulent seas. It's a silly exercise to test the human spirit with struggle. But I believe it's in these moments that we get to explore the very essence of who we are. The storm's finally passed, and tomorrow we have the opportunity to get on a plane that's coming during a tiny window of weather clearing before the next brutal storm arrives. But we face this crazy dilemma. There's also a new swell arriving tomorrow, and rumour has it there's a wave that we haven't seen break yet. A world-class slab that breaks on just about dry reef. It's the kind of wave that's dangerous to surf with a hospital nearby, let alone out here. Should we try to surf the slab and risk missing our flight, possibly getting stuck here for weeks? Or should we pack up and face the heartbreak of this rare wave going off without us? Nah, this is exactly what we came here for. imparted a powerful farewell as we rushed off to the plane. A glaring image and something to savour on the small crowd of waves we were headed back to. I was taunted by the thought that it'd still be out here all alone.
Every exploration has required me to take something, but to leave something too. If only a promise to bear witness. But like the push of opposing magnets, it's impossible to grab a perfect memory. Maybe that's what keeps this place immortal, if only in my mind. Whether I'll return or not, just knowing it's out there, that thought always pushes me back in, to the place where everything else is just an illusion, to the shore where the sea breaks its back. I'm just myself.